The main card presents episode 10 over here and welcome once again guys and it's so so happy that all of you were able to come over and click onto the podcast onto the podcast of the main card show again. Today's episode centers around one particular topic and uh, I'm only choosing this topic because I noticed that not a lot of um, people or not a lot of uh, publications as well uh, chose to run with it and kind of confused me as to why because it was a talking point when it was happening but then I suppose people only thought to just point it out when it was happening um, that well, okay this is happening but then they chose not to you know engage with it so the talking point for today uh, this is not going to be um, like a real hardcore discussion it's, it's just going to be uh, me just talking about something which i find it which i think it's very very cool honestly uh, when you actually think about it um, if you have been thinking about it but i think it's actually very very cool and one thing i want to talk about is uh, the fact that page actually um, is back at the performance center um, there was a tweet that was sent out by page um, when was this it was uh, on september the 18th that she was just outside the performance center which personally for myself which was something i really really enjoyed it was something i really loved because of the fact that every everything that had been surrounding page for the past um, number of months um, even now like a lot of people still on that tip. Everything that was surrounding Paige over the past number of months uh, was rather negative to a very large degree, if I can put it that way. So, for fans like myself to see what we saw uh, on that tweet that Paige is indeed back at the performance center, I personally took that as a good sign. And I remember tagging a friend of mine, Luazi, on that tweet as well. Um, because I felt really good about it, and I hope I can only hope that everybody else felt good about it because of the fact that it is Paige, and it is a woman who is incredibly talented, and it, and it is a woman who many can say, and even myself included, is one of the like more prominent women wrestlers in the WWE. I recall an interview that was done by the Big Show. On Chris, uh, was it Chris Van Vliet? I hope I'm saying his name correctly. Um, Chris Van Vliet um, asked the Big Show, and I watched this on YouTube. He asked the Big Show, "When did he? When, in his opinion, when does he think the new era began? When does the Big Show think the new era uh, began?" And the Big Show said, "He feels that the new era began when the Shield made their debut." When you take that into consideration, uh, when you look at the new era of women superstars who are now in the WWE, one has to say that the new era began with Paige when she made her debut the night after WrestleMania to challenge AJ Lee for the Divas Championship and ultimately winning it and therefore asserting that this is her house. I'm not sure many people will disagree with that, but that was indeed her house as she came to own it. For me personally, it was AJ's house for a very long time. And then Paige just stepped up and then she took that mantle as well. She joined AJ up in the main event for the Divas Division at the time, or was called the Divas Division. And then right after Paige would come the debuts of uh, the three of the four horsewomen of NXT. That would be Sasha Banks, Charlotte, as well as Becky Lynch. But then what I'm pointing out is the fact that it started with Paige. Paige was the first one to sort of step up into that spotlight, to sort of be the main roster, be on the main roster rather, and um, the new breed of female superstar for the WWE. I don't want to say new as in it's like never before seen, but the reintroduction of a new kind of female superstar at the time because we know that the direction that WWE was taking at the time was completely different to what it is now. So Paige was that first one to step out from the curtain and introduce herself to the main roster universe and to show like a different kind of, different kind of woman because she calls herself the anti-diva for a reason. So she was that. She was the first person to do that. So to sort of echo what the big show said to Chris Van Vliet, 
when you said that the Shield was were the superstars who introduced the new era. It was like that with Paige when she came through the curtain to come face AJ Lee after WrestleMania. So now I, for one, say that I'm I'm I I am glad to see that Paige is back in the WWE, and I am glad that she, you know, came back home, so to speak, because that, like we said, like all the negative stuff that's been happening around her that. Uh, should not have been happening, referring of course to the uh, to the whole stuff being released on the internet uh, that she was involved in. It's just it's one of those situations where I for one hope that when she does come back, I'm not even saying if, when she does come back onto TV, for instance, that the fans who are there, the fans who are live, will treat her with respect and they will welcome her back with open arms because I think that that's important. Right now, it's not the time to bash or make fun of someone because of that because that was a very serious situation and it, it wasn't pretty at all. So now is not the time to bash or make fun of someone because of, of, of that, because of what we saw on the internet. Now is the time to, sort of, to, to welcome someone back. Now is the time to say, we are glad to see you back. We are glad to that that you eventually came back to us because personally, a lot of us are very happy to see that Paige is like back in the WWE because a lot of people were saying that Paige was going to be released. And, you know, it's I think it's fair to like make that assessment, to, to make that, you know, assumption because of everything that was going on. Because at the very end of the day, the WWE is a business and it's a company and they have to keep up a certain image. But speaking about that, it's very encouraging to see uh, because I remember I was watching a program. I'm not sure whether I was watching Raw or SmackDown. Maybe it could have even been NXT. But the WWE was promoting uh, their WWE 24 documentary, Divas Revolution, Women's Evolution, which is on, on demand in uh, the WWE network, where whenever Paige was featured in the documentary, her parts are not cut out. Whenever a page was featured on the trailer, her parts are not cut out. So this is a good sign. And I say that because usually when it comes to a company, sometimes, uh, and, we, and I personally can say I've seen this happen with uh, AJ. Uh, when AJ uh, retired after WrestleMania 31, when there was that documentary that spoke about WrestleMania at Silicon Valley, it focused only on Paige. It didn't focus at all on AJ. And the only bit that you see of AJ is when she's tapping out one of the Bella Twins. That's it. But the entire time you see Paige, it's as if Paige was the only one who was in that match. And it's understandable, uh, given the circumstances of how everything was happening. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it's understandable. But with, with that kind of thing, when a company tries to um, move away from someone being part of of their books being part of their roster, they tend to do that. But then with Paige now, in this recent um, advertisement of the documentary, her parts are still there. And that's a good sign, I think, because of the fact that it shows that they haven't said to her, you are blacklisted and you're not going to come back here. That's just my observation of it all. And I remember it happened earlier this year as well with the Hardy Boys when there was that situation happening at TNA with their contracts. The WWE started releasing stuff uh, online on social media that's related to the Hardy Boys. People took it as a as a teaser. Uh, people took it as like, no, this is just you know what the WWE does. It's normal, but the, in a way, it was sort of it was sort of like bringing the people to the whole thing that, but you know, the Hardy Boys might actually return, and they did. They returned at WrestleMania. So, I'll be very glad to see Paige back, and I think. And I, I think it's such a great thing that she's like going back to the WWE and that indeed she hasn't been quote unquote blacklisted. And I can't wait to see what she's going to do against all the other women that are there because she was in that spot. Now all these women have sort of gone up and they've claimed that spot for themselves. So now to have the anti-diva, the one who started it all on the main roster, come back to work with everyone. I think it's going to be great because 
quite honestly, we can't deny that Paige is a talented wrestler. We can't deny that she is a talented woman. And she is a wrestler. I mean, she's been taking bumps ever since she was in her mother's womb. And, you know, there's still that movie that The Rock did, The Rock's company did about her and her family that's still going to come out. So I, for one, say I'm very glad to see that Paige is coming back. And I hope that she comes back stronger and better than ever. And, hey, all I can say and all I can wish for from the fans who are going to be at the shows, who are going to be there live is to show Paige love and to show her that support, you know, and to show her that we're glad to see her back because I'm glad to see her back. And I just hope that people won't be disrespectful, you know, and just intentionally try to make uh, a situation worse just because she's there. Because, I mean, it's unbecoming. I don't think for this kind of situation we need that. I mean, it's all fun and games sometimes, but then, you know, I don't think we need that now. I mean, let's... Let's just be positive about this and spread positive vibes, you know, and just welcome Paige back. Not that she doesn't deserve it, she does. I'm not saying welcome her back just because, you know, it's the right thing to do. But she does deserve to be welcomed back. I'm not saying no one else doesn't deserve to, but I mean, when it comes to Paige, when it comes to her being the woman who started it all, when it comes to her being sort of this character, this figure who, for a lot, for a lot of guys and women, actually, you know, they look to her as like, you know, I can be different and still be at the top. You know, I think that's worth like celebrating. And that's worth saying, you know what? We want you back. We're glad to see you back, you know, and I'm personally going to be glad to see her back. I'm going to be very happy. The moment that that song of hers hits, <laughs> I can tell you it's going to be like a very, very great uh, experience just watching that. So hats off. To Paige for finally making it back home and from recovering from her injury because she was injured and we can't forget that and for recovering from her injury and from her surgery and I hope that she'll be back to full fitness and I hope that she's going to be back on TV soon. I'm not sure whether it's going to be on the main roster or NXT if it's on the main roster I'm not sure if it's going to be Raw or Smackdown but wherever it is glad to have Paige back so that she can just have a new lease on her career and indeed we can finally turn a new page. See what I did there? 